It's the new year. It's a time when everyone's writing their own goals. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. In this video, we're going to talk about so many goals to work towards. But unlike every other video, this is going to be different. You know why? Because I believe that this is the year that you're actually going to make progress. I'll make sure of it. Let's go. Yo, what's up friends? Welcome back to this week's video. If you're new here, what's up? My name is Nicole and I make weekly videos on personal finance, investing, self-development, and other fun and interesting stuff. Whether or not you're actually watching this during the new year season, it doesn't really matter. Whether you're watching this in January, February, March, April, May, whatever. It's not only during the new years when you write out your resolutions. You can set goals any time of the year and work on them whenever you want. So I made a video before about how I work towards my goals. You can check it out here in case you guys are interested. But just know that with anything that you do, action is always the most important thing. I keep saying this over and over again. You can always plan as much as you want, especially during this new year season. Everyone's always writing their resolutions, right? But you won't make progress at all if you don't start. So that's the key idea here, okay? Action. Small progress is still going to be progress. Right, so here are eight money goals to work towards this year to build a solid financial foundation. I'm not a financial advisor, I just like talking about money and managing my money system, so I'm sharing it with you guys. Also, take note that you don't need to do everything on this list at the exact same time you might explode, so pick a few to work on at a time so that you can create systems to be able to sustain these finance habits. So let's start off with number one, create a financial plan. So this step is important, especially when you're still starting out on managing your money. This is like your why. Since it's the start, it's really the point when you're trying to identify the big picture goal. Why is it that you're actually doing this? And what do you hope to achieve from doing this managing money kind of thing? It can be vague, it can be specific, it's really up to you. As long as you're able to articulate and then you yourself can understand what is it that you actually want to get out of managing your money. The purpose of this is really just to have a guiding principle while you're working on your other money goals. Because you know, it's not always fun when you're saving, when you're budgeting, limiting your expenses. But as long as you're able to have your why, you understand why you're doing this, then you're going to be fine. Like for example, my financial plan, it's a bit vague, quite vague actually, because I'm not very good with the specifics. But my financial plan is really built on wanting to achieve a level of financial independence. Financial independence, what is that? But for me, I understand that financial independence means that money doesn't significantly impact my decisions. I'm independent from money. It doesn't stress me out. It doesn't affect my relationships. No, no. Like I'm free to make decisions on whatever I want and money is not a significant controlling factor. I just don't want money to control me. I don't know if that makes sense, but in my head, it does make sense. Currently, I'm still a third year student, so that's probably why my goals are still a bit vague because even I don't know what I want. But I'm starting to prepare myself as early as now for life after graduation. I, don't, I just don't want money to stress me out, <laughs> essentially. So for your financial plan, the goals that you have, you can split it into three categories, like short-term goals, medium-term goals, and long-term goals. Yeah, just splitting up the timelines because whatever financial decision you make will depend on how soon you want to achieve it. And a lot of these goals, they're not like in a vacuum because your short-term goals can connect to your medium-term goals, connecting to your long-term goals. So let's say you have a big, big long-term goal. You break it down into a medium goal or even short-term goals. So that's just thinking about it like, what can you do in the next year that can bring you closer to your long-term goal? And then the financial plan, I think of it as the dreaming stage. Because you're not actually doing anything yet, you're just planning, right? Next, tracking your cash flow. Every single peso, tracking income, expenses, all those things. Now that you have an idea of the place that where you want to go in your financial plan, you have an idea of what you want to achieve, this is where you want to be. Now you have to identify your starting point. If this is your goal, are you here? Is this where your starting point? Are you here? Yeah, just like identifying. What's your starting point? What exactly am I working with? How much money do I have? Where is it? Do a finance audit, a personal finance audit. List out all the money that you have. Every single peso. How much debt do you have? Just list it all out. You can do this in less than a day so you have an idea of where you're starting from. Once you list everything out, it's time to like track all of your expenses, all the money that goes in and out of your accounts. You have to track it. Track every single peso. If you don't know where your money goes, then how will you ever manage it? You can use a notebook, you can use an app, whatever it is that works for you. My personal favorite is using a spreadsheet. So once you're able to do this consistently, you'll start noticing your spending patterns. How much do you spend on Lazada, on Shopee, how often? Mga ganun. And once you know that, you can start making adjustments. 
So this point leads to number three, budgeting and allocating your money. Huh? Budget? Ew, boring. Bye. Pass. Joke lang. At its core, budgets are just essentially telling your money where to go. It helps you be more intentional with how you spend your money, especially when beforehand you already allocated at the start. Okay, this is how much I'm going to spend for shopping. This is how much I'm going to save. I personally don't budget like hardcore. I know a lot of people do with their insane setups like whoa, but that's because I'm still a student and I don't really have big financial responsibilities. So I just make do with tracking my expenses and having a free to spend fund so that I can control and limit my spending. For everyone else, you can try the ever-popular 50-30-20 budgeting rule. So that's essentially 50% going to your needs as like rent, utility bills, grocery, then 30% goes to your wants, and then 20% goes to your savings and investments. But just know that this is not like a hard rule. You don't really have to strictly follow it. You can always adjust these numbers. It really depends from person to person, whatever works for you. But yeah. I personally am just aiming to save 70% of every income I make. So with every 1,000 pesos, 700 of that straight to savings and investments. Just hardcore hoarding money. That's why I wear the same exact clothes in every video. <laughs> and then next, build your emergency fund. This is important in any personal finance system, especially when you're preparing to invest already. There's no other substitute from the peace of mind you'll get by having a financial safety net of like money set aside. Especially with the pandemic, it really taught us the importance of having money set aside because you really don't know what could happen. So the rule for emergency funds is to save up three to six months worth of living expense. But honestly, you can never be too safe. So try to stretch it to six to 12 months, kung kaya. And then put this money into a high interest savings account. Not don't invest this money because it needs to be available just like that, especially during emergencies. Number five, pay off debt, utang, especially the high interest debt. Oh my God, those things will eat into your savings and your gains. Whew. Let's say for example, credit card debt. Usually the credit cards have an interest rate of 3.5% every month. Now it's like 2%, but yeah, well, you, know, you get it. Keeping in mind, for example, when you put your money into a savings account, in a higher savings account that gives you 25 to 4% in a year, the interest of credit card debt accumulates really, really fast. Like compound interest, holy crap. Pay off any high interest debt because that grows faster than you would ever imagine. Just... And then number six, start investing. Very exciting step. I really think that everyone should be investing their money. A lot of people, when they think investing, they think stock market, and then they think, oh my God, very risky, gambling, casino. No, never gonna invest. But no, when you're investing, there's actually two ways to approach it, no? One is for capital appreciation, and two is for capital preservation. So capital preservation is essentially you invest it to grow your money. But the other thing is when you want to preserve your capital, there's this thing called inflation. Your money gets weaker by 3% every single year. And investing is one way to protect your money from inflation. So I've made a lot of videos on my channel where I talk about different investments that you can put your money into. But something to keep in mind when choosing the investment is to choose one that aligns with your risk appetite. Because usually, say this with me, high risk, high reward, low risk, low reward. So when you're going for investment that gives you a high rate of return, do expect that that investment comes with a higher risk. You should start investing. This is the year if you haven't yet. Explore the world of investing. I made a video before about where I invest as a 20 year old. So you guys can check it out there. Maybe you can get some ideas on what to do with your money. And then number seven, start a side hustle. Like build an additional source of income this 2021. Like as much as I say now, you have to save your money, you have to like budget, those kinds of things. You'll eventually arrive at a certain point when you can't save anymore. There's only so much you can save with just a single source of income. A lot of people have only one source of income, and that's usually their job, their day job, their salary. Rather than spending your time looking for the best investment that can give you the highest gains, I think it's a better use of your time to find ways to increase your income. It will increase your income earning potential by starting a side hustle so that you have more income to invest. Another benefit is that you can actually reach your finance goals faster since you have more money coming in. Some ideas, I don't know, like there's so much way to make money nowadays, especially in the age of the internet. You can do anything. You can learn a skill and then provide a service. You can start a small business, food business, stationary shop, 
anything like it's really up to you you have to find the opportunities for yourself to leverage it to monetize it so that you can build sources of income it's not easy to make money you have to put in the work in order for you to build income streams to build the skills in order for you to sell the service if you want to make more money you have to put in more work it doesn't magically come out of the sky now oh free money <laughs> no you have to put in the work number eight build credit so this is directed really more for people around my age, especially when you plan to take out a loan in the future. I think this is so important in every adult life. It's just building credit history. Utang is not bad. No? Having a loan, it's not bad. Loans allow you to leverage other people's money. I'm not going to talk about it much here. But yeah, the easiest way you can do this is by getting a credit card. So I made a video about why and how I got a credit card as a student here in the Philippines. For this goal, you really need to assess whether or not you're responsible enough in paying your bill back in time, in full, every single month. But yeah, um, I think it's important to build credit because it will make it easier for you to take out the loan in the future. Right, so that's eight. I'm going to make sure that you achieve at least one of those at the end of the year. Uh, at the end of the day, personal finance is very easy. It's very doable. It's just saving more than what you spend. And that's how you accumulate money, right? What's just hard about personal finance is the mind games you have to play with yourself when you have to budget, when you have to control your spending, those kinds of things, delaying instant gratification. People tend to overcomplicate it, but it's really just simple. You guys can follow me on Instagram. I post stories there almost every day. Like the Facebook page, join the Discord server. Thank you guys so much for watching. Woo! Very hype, exciting year ahead. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. It's investing, self development, and other fun and interesting. It's self development and other fun and interesting. Bulol here to build a solid financial foundation. Why is it? What? It, why? What? It, what? 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 Adjust your current spending patterns so that it better. It is able. What? Huh.